Hello everybody, um, the Too Good uh, To Be True podcast, I am your host, uh, Pascal Mayala. Uh, today, um, there will not be music in the background. There will not even be music when I re- uh, released this uh, episode of this podcast. Because uh, we have a, a, a breaking news um yesterday um we lost uh an actor i think everybody know his name i think we all saw the news um his name is Carl Wetters if you don't know who he is uh he's a, he used to be a, a former football player uh he played he played he did play for the NFL i, I believe he played for the Oakland Raiders i think but I, yeah, yeah, he did play for the Oakland Raiders. But in the off day, he did a lot of uh, acting. Take a, a a course of arts, you know, just like all those uh, 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 actor and actress do do in their lifetime before they become a major big star. I mean, Carl Werders had a a phenomenal career. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Um. He he did a lot of movie, a lot of movie. I think everybody recognized the most famous movie, uh, Rocky, Rocky one, Rocky two. I believe Rocky one, Rocky three, and Rocky four. It is where Rocky four he died. The character Apollo Creed, Apollo Creed died, in the in the movie. But he didn't just do uh uh Rocky. He did uh, the movie Predator. I remember I, I, I watched it a long time ago. Uh, he did another movie, um, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore with Adam Sandler. And most recently, he did uh, uh, one of those uh, Star Wars uh, uh, series, uh, The Mandalorian. I mean, that guy was had a hell of a career. I mean, he died in... Night, and he died... Uh, he died in like um yeah uh I believe yeah um uh February first uh, two thousand twenty four. Man, I can't believe it's gone. I I just want to rectify this before I continue. Uh, he did play Rocky two. I just forgot about Rocky two. So he did play Rocky one, Rocky two, Rocky three, and Rocky four. So all those four Rocky out of the, what do you, out of the six, out of the six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Carl Weather. Uh, let God open the the door for you to enter heaven. Rest in peace, sir. Now, um, we're going to talk about, I think I will talk about, uh, um, three major important thing, but first, um, sometime, um, I think I'm going to do that most of the time. So not all the time, but most of the time, sometime when I do my research, I'm not really fully prepared. I'll be honest with you. I'm not really fully prepared because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I was just uh, minding my own business. You know, I was watching something on Netflix, which I talked about it at the end of my, of my podcast. And I hear this breaking news. That Zach Levine is out for the rest of the rest of the season and you ask him why he's out out uh, of the rest of the season well he has a foot injury he he's going to be out uh he will be out for four to six months i mean just the, the end of the, of the season but what even make it worse is that um He's in the trade rumors. Remember, 
because Chicago had need to rebuild and and the Chicago Bulls uh, season are pretty up and down and they they're not even the, I think they're in a I think they're in a, in the playing discussion I believe I going I just want to look at the 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 the, um, the 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 Eastern Conference and uh, yeah I believe I believe that um that the um uh, standing for the Chicago Bulls they are no, they're ninth place in the East, so they they can still be in a play in. But um, I mean, it's time to break up that team. I mean, Demar Derozan is in the discussion of the trade rumor. I mean, I heard Philly you know are interesting at him. Maybe maybe the New York Knicks, or probably Los Angeles Lakers too. So. LA Lakers probably gonna um, probably in- be interesting. Same thing for Zach Levine. I mean, if you want to know how much point he's averaging this season, he's averaging 19, 19.5 po- 19 points, five rebounds, and three assists. I mean, he's he's pretty much under the contract right now, but he. He can have an a a a player option for two thousand twenty six two thousand twenty seven. And it's also his his salary. People don't know what is his salary. You ask me what is his salary. His salary is forty three million dollars right now. Forty two million dollars. Who who's gonna pick up um, who gonna pick up a uh, Zach Levine. I guess the Lakers. I guess. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, people. Um. Uh, I mean, they don't. If 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 the Lakers want to trade them, that means they have to give up uh Zach Levine, a couple of draft pick, maybe a a, a first late first round, uh, second round pick, and get another player. Player involved, or you gotta involve um a, a third team. In my opinion, in my goddamn opinion, because I don't see, I don't, I don't see the Lakers doing that. I mean, who's gonna pick up a, a Zach Levine contract? That's my question. That that's what I mean. They should have broken up uh, last year. I'll be I'll be honest with you. They should have broken up last year for Zach uh the the Mar the Rosen Zach Levine Lonzo Ball because it doesn't even work. It's not working anymore. I mean uh, I mean uh. Lonzo Ball did not play for uh, two years. I would say two years. I mean, that is a colossal failure. I mean, built through the draft. That's the only thing. I mean, Kobe White, he's a piece. He probably going to stay with the Bulls. You got Patrick Patrick William. He's 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 uh part of the future. I mean, this whole Bulls or uh, Chicago Bull, uh, sorry, Chicago Bulls organization is pretty much a uh, uh, dead right now. I don't say dead like oh they're dead for good. I I talk about dead in, 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 instead of uh, in a way that um. That you 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 bring in those names, and you know what it remind me of. It remind me of the two thousand sixteen two thousand seventeen season. Remember, remember that uh, uh that year they had uh Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, Ray John Rondo. You we all remember that the big three. And what happened? It it was a colossal failure. In, in 
it's it, this is what I don't understand with the Bulls organization. Instead of a rebuild that team, you just bring you just did that for a, a cash grab for for the for an old player like Dwayne Wade or Ray John Rondo who by the way though all those including Jimmy Butler and he 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 was a ball roster and that was his team but you cannot have two players who who cannot shoot I'll be honest with you and remember and also remember Miami Heat did not want to pay Dwayne Wade, so that's why he went to the Bulls. That one year contract, that one year deal. It also for Ray John Rondo too, one year deal. Both of them cannot shoot. Now with this, with this roster, at least the one with the. Dwayne Wade, uh, Jimmy Butler, and Ray John Rondo, they went to the playoff. They almost beat the and remember in the, in that in that in that in that year they almost beat uh the uh the Boston Celtic. Remember that the Boston Celtic thing with Isaiah Thomas, uh Al Horford, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, you know, and, and Jay Crowder. Yeah, th- those those teams, they were the number one seed. They were 2-0. If Rondo haven't got injured, they're probably gonna beat them. I'll be I'll be honest, they're probably gonna beat the 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 the, the first the first seed, the Boston Celtics. And that and also they probably they're gonna break up. They're probably gonna trade uh Isaiah Thomas and you know, then they will have Kyrie and so on and so forth. But they were lucky. Now for this current roster of the 2023-2024 um, uh, Chicago Bulls. At least that one year, I think, yeah, that one year in 2022, they made the playoff. Last year, last year they, they made the play-in tournament and they got eliminated by the Miami Heat. This season, they... In the playing, and I hope they will. I hope, and I said, I hope they stay in the playing. Because if they do not make the playoff, which I think they will probably not, if they don't make the, the playoff, it's time to blow out that team and start for sc- from the scratch. Start it from the ground and build yourself up to become a, a, a true contender. That's all I got to say about that. For the Zach Levine uh, uh, situation. Now, we talk about, in my podcast, that I love to talk about culture. It's not just hip-hop. It's not just basketball and football. Or sneakers. <laughs> I also love wrestling. I, I was a huge wrestling fan growing up. Born in 1993. Around the... the, the sorry. The new generation era. Remember with the Bret Hart, the Razor Ramon... Uh, Shawn Michael, Cap is D, uh, Diesel, Undertaker, so on and so forth. When I was growing a little bit, I I was I was alive when the Attitude Era started, with the rise of Stone Cold, Triple H, The Rock, Mankind, you know, Undertaker, Kurt Angle, and so on and so forth. In the two thousand, I didn't really watch it. I did. I did watch wrestling, but we were in the ruthless aggression era. Like John Cena and Vince McMahon, Vince, Vince McMahon will say. Although I don't want to, I do not want to talk about Vince McMahon. 
after the uh, the, the 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 law lawsuit against them. So uh, we're not going to talk about it in my in, in my podcast because what well, we heard it, you heard it, I heard it. What's happening with Vince McMahon is disgusting. It is disgusting, and I am appalled. And I'm pretty mad and sad why I am a wrestling fan. This is not about um, Vince McMahon. You know WrestleMania is coming up. One of my favorite uh, year, WrestleMania. I love WrestleMania. And you have to tell me, what is your... Top five personal WrestleMania of all time. In no particular order, I got WrestleMania 18, WrestleMania 21, WrestleMania 23, WrestleMania 24. And WrestleMania 26. That is my personal WrestleMania of all time. If you have to ask me what is your top five WrestleMania of all time in uh, in the sense of match that I watch or you just watch in a network, a WWE ne- network. I used to have it, the WWE network. Oh, maybe I would. Maybe I would think about it to buy the network, but I have to rethink about it. If you have to ask me, what is your top five greatest WrestleMania match of all time? In no particular order, again. Hogan versus Rock, WrestleMania eighteen. Ric Flair versus Shawn Michael, that WrestleMania twenty four. Undertaker versus um Undertaker versus Shawn Michael not twenty five. Twenty five is a good in this is my opinion it's good. But twenty six added more because you have the stipulation. Remember that that WrestleMania twenty five but it was the light versus the darkness. You know, the dream match that everybody wanted to see. WrestleMania 26, it was like streak versus career. If Shawn Michaels cannot beat The Undertaker, his his career will be ended. And final, uh, uh, did I say it? Yeah, Hogan Rock, uh, uh, Flair versus uh, Shawn Michaels. And Russ, uh, Sean versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 26. What else? Damn. I'll, I'll say Hogan Andre. WrestleMania 3. Even though I wasn't born. But you know how that... Uh, 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 the match... Impacted, if not the greatest match, but it's the most important match. Just like in the Super Bowl, if you ask me, what is the the the, the most important Super Bowl of, of all time? No, not the greatest, but the most in uh, Super Bowl important. I know what people say is Super Bowl one is the most important because you know. It was the first, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I get that. But if you ask me, what is the most important Super Bowl of all time? It was Super Bowl three. The Joe Neiman guarantee. That's the most important. And you know what? Maybe next time without maybe on Monday, 
I, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe on Monday I will do a uh, top 10 uh, 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 greatest uh, Super Bowl of all time. I'm I, I probably going to do that next time if I do the podcast. I think that would be a great idea to do uh, a uh, top 10 greatest Super Bowl of all time. And my final uh, uh, WrestleMania match, I would say, yeah, I know, I, I know, I, I, I don't like the current. I'll, I'll give you honorable mention. Honorable mention to uh, the Daniel Bryan. Honorable mention to Brock versus Roman Reigns. Honorable mention to. Uh, Edge versus uh, um, Mick Foley. Honorable mention. Uh, to Eddie Guerrero versus uh, Kurt Angle. And finally, honorable mention to Kofi Kingston versus Dan O'Brien. But... My last favorite WrestleMania of all time is WrestleMania 3. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus the Macho Man Randy Savage. You can tell why, you can say, why, why? Why that WrestleMania three? Why the Steamboat versus uh important uh Macho Man is very important. And the reason why I chose that match, it is two reasons. Number one is is that even though if you watch the the the, the true story of WrestleMania, Gerald Briscoe said. And I think it, it. I think it opened up, uh, a very important thing. What he said. He said that if you're not in the main event, at least you could go out there and steal the show. And that's why, uh, 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 um, uh, Savage and Steamboat did. They were not the main event, but they found a way to steal the show. At WrestleMania. And another reason I chose that that that, that match is that it's the is that WrestleMania that stole the event. Hogan and Andre sold the event. Steamboat and Savage s- stole the event. And also is is how today uh, WrestleMania is right now. This match is the blueprint of every wrestler who who, who tried to be. I mean, even Chris Jericho said it in the documentary, the true the true story of WrestleMania is that uh, is that you it's more as a technical match. It's the first time we see a a technical a technical match on the biggest stage of all time, WrestleMania. And I just, I just, I just want to. Before I continue, I just want to pick it back that my honorable mention. Uh, and I, I forgot about uh, uh, Austin versus Bret Hart. You know, it, it's probably the most uh, uh important moment in WrestleMania thirteen. I mean, good guy versus bad guy, good guy, bad guy. You know, the role have reversed. Just for my honorable mention, why do I bring that up? You know, it's very rare for me to watch a WWE in this day and age. Even though the business is booming. We all know that Cody Rhodes um, run uh, the Royal Rumble this this year this year in Tampa.
I think that I don't know what to say. Well, I don't know what to say about this. Well, I'm about to say is that the uh, I don't know if it is true or not. Is that a uh, Cody Rhodes is not gonna face Roman Reign at WrestleMania? Instead, it is his cousin, The Rock. It is The Rock who's gonna face um uh his cousin Roman Reign. I mean, I mean, why? It doesn't really make sense to me. Why, why the Rock have to main events against Roman Reigns? I mean, that mean that mean he Cody Rhodes has to face a a a a a a a a um um a, a Seth Rollins for the title. I mean, I, I people got people got upset. Or oh, angry. I got upset. I was very angry. The way The Rock did, it was pretty much selfish. The Rock doesn't need the title. I mean, and what, and what, and I'm going to curse. And sorry my language, people. I mean, they fucked up a, a, a Cody Rhodes chance to win the title at WrestleMania. I mean, last year he should have wanted the, uh, the, that, 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 the WrestleMania title. He should have won the title over Roman Reigns. If they know they have to, uh, uh, um, if they had, it had to, if they had uh, to know that The Rock, uh, uh wouldn't, would, uh, probably will, will not, uh, uh, face Roman Reigns, uh, um, this year WrestleMania. I think it's got to go to Cody. Even last year, Cody Rhodes should have won. Um, the the last year WrestleMania, with a and go home with the belt. Oh no! What they did is to to um. They did that because you know they wanted to they want to break a Hulk Hogan record. I mean, what record? This imaginary record. It doesn't even exist. I mean, I know what you know. It, 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 it's very rare for me to watch WrestleMania. This year, I'm not gonna watch WrestleMania. Yes, I know Brock is a part timer, but also they don't need part timers. The wrestling, re, this current wrestling is it, it, very loaded. I mean, it's more loaded than the Attitude Era. I might add. I mean, we don't need part timers. I'm not saying that uh, part timers are banned. No, they can be welcome anytime, anywhere, any moment if they want to match. But not in the main event of WrestleMania. I know people say, oh, it's good for business. But business is very, it's already been good. I mean, that's the most selfish thing that The Rock did. The most selfish thing I've ever seen in my life. i never seen, i never seen something like this in my life. And now people ask me, oh, the, at least they got the Seth Rollins title match. I mean, I mean, did you hear his promo? Did, did, you, did you not hear Roman Reigns? A promo. He just buried that title. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a goddamn thing. I mean, sometimes WWE I don't understand. 
they do something extremely good. And then when when you want to add something, they they try to fuck it up. I mean I mean uh, what that is the most selfish thing I've ever seen in my life. And people say, well, it, 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 and I think it's got to do also with the injured CM Punk injuries. <coughs> Sorry. If CM Punk have an injury, our night one main event will be Seth Rollin, Seth Rollin versus CM Punk. And night two will be Roman versus Cody. Now that C- uh, CM Punk is injured, we're probably going to get Seth Rollins. Sorry, Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes. And that match, I don't know. I do not. I'm not interesting. Cody Rhodes need to finish the story because he he. He wants to win the title that his father did not win when he was in the WWE in Madison Square Garden. I don't remember what year. I believe it was in the late 70s, 80s. I don't give a shit. But the way they 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 they, they screwed the they screwed Cody Road. It's unbelievable. Very unbelievable. I mean, sometimes you... I mean... I don't know what's WWE. And people say, uh, 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 Rock versus Roman is the perfect match. What? Why the rock? If you say that, what? Why does he need a title? He doesn't need a title. Rock doesn't need a title, and it doesn't even make sense. I hope people. I, I don't. I don't wish this. I wish. Maybe they are teasing it. I don't know. But if 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 it is confirmed, let's see in a few. Uh, weeks, few months. Let's see for for two months. Is that if Rock is facing uh Romarin from the title? I don't know what to say. I mean the same thing with you, you know what it remind me of. It remind me of um uh, Rock versus Cena. You know what I'm saying? Rock, Rock versus Cena. Remember that first WrestleMania, uh, twenty eight, the first, the first meet. I know everybody have the different thought. I think it was an okay match. I mean, I mean, the Rock got injured in that match. And he not only he got injured, but he won at WrestleMania twenty eight in Miami, in sunlight. And Sun Life uh, Stadium, not the hard, not the hard rock, but Sun Life. And I thought to myself, you know what? It should have been Cena to win this because, okay. In my mind, I will say this: if Cena have won versus uh, the Rock, you know, the Rock lose to Cena, passing the torch, and the following year. Cena going against CM Punk, against uh uh, uh, uh uh just ending the the title reign uh, of uh, CM Punk. That WrestleMania twenty nine. No, they didn't do that. Rock won CM Punk at the Royal Rumble two thousand thirteen. I remember in Phoenix, Arizona. And then uh, uh Rock had to main event. I uh, see the uh the the main event of WrestleMania twenty nine, which that WrestleMania twenty twenty nine was garbage. The main event suck as hell. The only great match 
that I, I can always rewatch. CM Punk versus The Undertaker. You know that 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 uh, uh Paul Bear tribute, everything with the urn. And the Rock has seen a, a part two suck as hell. I mean, it was the same move, the same move, back and forth. And also, what made it even worse, the Rock got agent bicep, bicep tear. That's the even worse, because of his age. And that's what I'm, I'm worried about, this, if, if Rock is main event Roman Reigns. Because if he gets injured... Now what you gonna say? And I ask the fan, what do you think is gonna happen if Rock get injured for let's say this for ten minutes in the in the match? If he get injured, now what you gonna say to fan? I don't want to hear no excuse. Cody Rhodes should main event. Uh, 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 WrestleMania against uh, 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 Roman Reigns to finish the story. And that's all I gotta say. Now, before I leave, I want to talk about this uh, Netflix documentary that I watched uh, recently. I watched the documentary uh, called uh, uh, The Greatest Night in Pop. If you don't know what it is, it is the documentary of the uh, when all the artists uh, sang We Are the World. You know, featuring Michael Jackson, Tina Turner, Diana Taurasi, Lionel Richie, Ray, Ray, Ray Charles, um... Stevie Wonder, and so on and so forth. When I watched that documentary, I was in awe. I was amazed. And even though I was born in the 80s, it brings nostalgia. It brings memories that all those artists came in this one studio, January, January 20, uh, 28, 1985. The 80s was a different world compared to now. I don't want uh, I don't want to spoil it to everybody. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you have seen it, listen. And also they had 10 days to do that. If you ask me what do you mean 10 days? They need 10 days to uh, to 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 write the song, to find the melody of the song, to find out which uh artists who's wanted to join to sing the the, the 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 this song. I mean, it was amazing to see all those artists. Like I said in my beginning of the in the beginning, those artists, like I said. The Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Stevie Wonder, Ray Ray Charles, Tina Turner, Bruce Springsteen, Cindy Loppers. They are larger than life. And it's very rare to it's very rare. To, to see larger than life artists in in today's society. And, and I'm saying like people like uh people like uh, uh, uh let's say people like um 
Justin Timberlake, Jay Z, Beyonce. I mean, we, even this current mega mega the stallion, um, maybe Nell, Nelly Furtado, Nelly. I know, I know. Um, I, I go in hip hop, but I can go even rock and roll like Metallica, Ever Evanescence, Simple Plan. <coughs> I'm sorry, Celine Dion. It's very rare to see larger than life in this day and age. And this documentary, what I saw, it was like starstruck, starstrucking. I mean, it was amazing. They had to do record a song in one day. And also, they did it uh, after the the MAA, the the uh, the MAA Music Award. They had to go to a uh, 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 to a, a a studio in in Los Angeles, somewhere in downtown, in the downtown of LA. Which it was amazing to hear artists who like Lionel Richie, Cindy Lauper, Bruce Springsteen, um, even Quincy Jones. We, we, we don't see him physically, but um, we, he had a voice. The behind the scene was a pretty amazing. Pretty amazing what I saw. And they all had to have registered. Uh, they had to record the song to become a, 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 a one beautiful melody song, and to, just like just like uh, like any artist try to 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 uh, to record a song. But this one was more about all the artists singing uh, united as one. United as one. To sing that beautiful song. I mean, there was one moment. Um, I just want. I, I just. I don't want to spoil. I just want to give one spoil moment. There was one spoil moment when Quincy Jones wrote uh, a quote, uh, and he put it on the wall, and he said, "Check your egos out uh, outside." I said, "Check your egos out of the door." Something like that, which. Which you know it does happen all the time. You know we see artists who doesn't like other artists. You know what I mean? They, I mean, I mean they don't like working with each other. You know, they don't pretty much like each other. They don't know. Uh, 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 some of those artists have their egos. You, know? I mean, and it's like put your uh, your ego out of the window, and let's work together. That's how it felt like, felt like. And and they have to record like to eight eight uh, 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 um um eight AM in the morning. Eight 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 in the morning to finish this. And let me tell you how this song impacted. It not just it not just impacted in America. It impacted international. That is why when you see um, <coughs> sorry, when you see a, a a song like "We Are the World," it impacted in the world. Even though you don't understand the 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 the, the lyrics. But you can feel the melody of the song. It was a thing of beauty. Now today we we've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it in other events like the uh, like for example, all the artists go to Ghana to do concert like that, or people try to do awareness. This. 
this song has the most impacted of all time. And no disrespect to the uh uh to the We Are the World uh, 2010. I remember that that uh We Are the World uh uh 2010. Remember what they sang for uh, um um uh IET. I believe that was the 25th anniversary. It's not a knock on that. But this one, the 1985, has more impact than this 25th uh, anniversary. 25th, uh, we are the world 25th uh, uh, for I IET. Before I close the, this uh, part, uh, actually, you know what? Before I close this, there's moment in life you just want to say, you, actually, not just want to say, but <coughs> sorry, you're always wondering where have you been? When you heard those song, this song. And I think this is one of them. If you're born in the 80s. Or you maybe a, a little girl. Or you, rem or you were a, 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 um, a teenager. Where have you been when this song were released? And what, uh, how, did you, how did you feel about this song? Were you surprised there was a lot of artists. Were in this song who sang. Just this one song. Just this one song. At the, I would say this at the end of the of the of the documentary. There was something that Lionel Richie said. It really, really, really touched my heart. And I, I want to read this quote for all of y'all. He Lionel Richie said that his father used to say, "Enjoy coming home, because there will, there will, there will be come, there will be, there will be, there will come a time that you can't go home." And he asked him why. Well, the house will be there, but the people who in the who are in the house won't be there. And that studio is the house. He pointed out this is where Michael Jackson was there. Cindy Lauper sat down uh, on the on the on the right uh co right uh, corner. Bruce Springsteen on his left was singing it. I mean, and you know what? <coughs> That is true. That is true. And that's why I always say, enjoy coming home, people. There will come a time that you can't go home. And as I said to people, we have one life. People come and go. One day they there. The next day they're gone. And this is what I appreciate about this documentary. About it. And, you can, and also you can see at the end uh, Lionel Richie cry. Because. The studio was home. Where it all started, the We Are the World song. I didn't have any issue with this documentary, which was excellent.
But there's one thing, there's, uh, there's a lot of artists, I wish they were in a documentary. Not just the people who are alive, you know. They could have picked certain people, you know. Which I saw Bruce Springsteen, uh, Cindy Lauper, and so, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. But there's people like who who are larger than life. And when I think about it from an emotional standpoint, um, there's a lot of people I wish they were alive. Like uh, Tina Turner, I wish. I <coughs> Sorry. Like Tina Turner, Ray Charles. But there's one more person. I wish he was alive. To talk about it. It's the late great. Michael Jackson. I mean. There are some. Tears. In music. There's tier one. All the time, goat, 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 goat. This tier two, like, they're they're great, but something is missing. And there's tier three, like the Genesis. They will become um, a bigger star. Michael Jackson has his own tier. I mean, you do have Beyonce. I would put Beyonce in tier ones. But Michael Jackson is in his own elite. It's his own class. That's the one person that's missing. In this documentary. And I'm so happy at the end of the documentary... They say all living memory like Michael Jackson, Tina Turner, God rest her beautiful soul, Ray Ray Charles. I mean, if you want to talk about, if you if you look at this at the, the picture, how we are the world. Imagine if it was the hundred year anniversary of the NBA. <coughs> Sorry. Or the 75th anniversary. If you look at this picture. This is like. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Class. Hall of Fame thing. Hall of Fame category. And that's how we are the world was. In this documentary. So that's it for the sh- uh, for this podcast today. Um, if you wanna follow me uh, on 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 Twitter, so <coughs> on Twitter is belly uh, ha- uh, uh, hash uh, belly versus uh, pmm on my uh, 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 Twitter. Um, on my Instagram is. Um, uh, uh, Pascal Maya, uh, Pascal slash Mayala uh, slash fifteen. If you want to listen to, uh, uh, if, if, even you want to go to my thread, it's Pascal slash slash Mayala slash fifteen. You could follow me on on thread, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Instagram. If you want to uh, listen to previous podcasts. Go to Spotify, uh, Too Good To Be True podcast with Pascal Mayala. And I will say this. Take care of yourself, brothers and sister. Thank you for listening. I'll see you later. <laughs>